my brothers and sisters in Islam. When I practice a particular action, did I do it because of tradition first or because of Islam first? I know customs and traditions are important in Islam, very important. In fact, in our Sharia, there are five principles in coming to a conclusive uh, ruling in fiqh. And one of these principles is al-urfu muhakkam, that customs can be used in a court of law. Customs can be used in making rulings in Sharia, but not before a clear, a clear ruling from Allah or His Messenger is there. So when there are clear rulings from Allah and His Messenger, and there is tradition and custom, which one do I put before the other? I'll give you a few examples. As a marriage celebrant, I'm a marriage celebrant in Australia, I found out many different cultures in how they perform their marriages. And subhanAllah, some of them were pleasing, but others of them, wallahi, caused us so much heartache, heartache which caused a lot of youth to not want to get married and resort to haram means or to difficult means, which caused the parents to fall into predicaments. Tradition and culture, for example, in my culture, the Arab culture, so that I don't attack anyone here of a different culture, subhanAllah. In my culture, the Arab culture, the Lebanese culture, when you want to get married, you have to talk about the mahr. This is Islamic. The mahr, the dowry, as loosely translated. And it is a custom and tradition in certain parts of Lebanon that it has to be more than a hundred thousand dollars. Mahar of a hundred thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And you know what they say to you? They say to you, don't worry, don't worry, it's just ink on paper. You know what ink on paper means? Habar ala warak. Meaning it's, it's, we're not, we don't really mean it. Allahu Akbar. And then you reply and you know that on the day of judgment, Allah will ask you about this mahr. Because Allah says, nihla. Give your wives the sadaq. The sadaq is the mahr which you promised them. Nihla. From, you know, out of satisfaction, out of clear heartedness. And don't take any of it. You come and tell them this, they say, no, 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 it's just ink on paper. And then, the, God forbid, when a divorce happens or a separation happens, what happens? The parents come in and they say, we want every cent. What happens to this person? Culture takes over and this person no longer wants to get married. How can they get married and afford to get married? So what do they resort to? Their daughters, their sons, eloping, running off. Why make the mahar so big? Because of culture and the stresses of tradition. What will people think? My daughter went cheap. Allah, Allah. So now you're selling your daughter? One brother said to me, uh, he went to Lebanon to get married. Malish, I can t speak about my own kind a little bit. Went to get married. Brother said to him, $50,000, knowing that he's from Australia. He said, Shambhani Ba'ra, you're selling me a, a cattle, a cow or something? Yani, what's this? <laughs> this is a trade of livestock. <laughs> Your daughter is worth more than that. But do you have to put a price to her? This tradition. Another thing. When you get engaged, you have to chuck this huge party. You know, engagement, engagement, before marriage. The nikah hasn't even been done. So then they say, okay, now I want to officially engage you to my daughter. We have to invite the relatives and we have to invite this person and that person and that person. So how much money are you going to spend on this celebration? You have to hire this hall out and you have to buy this thing. And she has to wear a semi-wedding dress. Allahu Akbar. The brother is not even halfway, he's not even married, it's just a question. Can I marry your daughter inshallah in the future and see how things go? And automatically he's already paid what the amount of what it will cost to actually get married. So the brother ends up poor and then says, SubhanAllah, you know, look, uh, we can't get married right now. Tayyib, why? I've spent all my money on your engagement. We have to now postpone it till about a year. I have to work harder and I have to now work double jobs. I'm sorry I can't talk to you. I can't get to know you anymore because this was the intention. Because now I have to go to work. Night shift and day shift. Then the parent says, Ya Akhi, it's been one year. You know, tradition says that you're not allowed to be with her alone. Let's do the Kat Biktab, the Nikah contract. So they come to do the Kat Biktab. Ah! But when you do the Kat Biktab, you are not allowed to go out alone. You're not allowed to hold each other's hands. 
what will people think? Look, okay, you've married her. No, 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 we're only doing this to help you because people will start talking, you're coming in and out, in and out all the time. This is ayy. So now look how difficult marriage has become. And then they want to cut off the marriage. Bring the mahar. I thought it was ink on paper, every cent. She's my daughter, you think she'll go cheap like that? Just come and go? So what happens? They don't want to get married anymore. We have now in the West this idea of de facto relationships and partnership. No longer husband and wife. Even in our own Muslim community. Why? Because they prioritize tradition and culture and customs more than Islam itself. But what I was trying to point out was when culture and tradition become so serious that subhanAllah simplicity of the deen turns into this complication. I've just given one simple example of culture and customs and tradition where the deen made it so easy. And when we prioritize things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make upon us, we become like the people before us as the Christians and Jews did. They made rabbi, you know, rabbis and, and, and uh, priesthood where a sect of them are not allowed to get married. Priests who cannot get married. We see the result today of what is happening to them. How can an imam give counseling to a married couple when he cannot get married? How? So when we make prioritize certain things before Allah and His Messenger, our hearts become hardened, our relationships become severed, our happiness goes away, our lives become complicated, and all of our actions which we did are like dust in the wind. I wish that we could have even earned something pleasurable out of it.